Peter Madden, Chief Executive Forum for the Future, you've been explaining to the symposium today that and, and exploring the trade-offs between efficiency, equity, sustainability and resilience and also making some policy recommendations. Now, what exactly do you mean by all of those? Well, I've been looking at how we're going to feed our cities in the future. We know it's going to be more urban world and we know there's going to be intense pressures on, on resources and land and food. So if you're living in a city in the future, you could be quite vulnerable when it comes to food. So I'm asking the questions about how are we going to guarantee that people in the, in, in the future can have food and secure access to food that's healthy, that's sustainable and, and that's efficiently produced. And of course there are trade-offs between this. If, if you want food resilience then you may be more protectionist but that also may mean you're less economically efficient. If you produce things locally, it may not be the environmentally the best way to, to do things because you might want to produce some things where the sun shines. So I'm, I'm exploring uh, the, these, these trade-offs and then, and then asking what do, we, what do we need to do and what do, we, do our policymakers um, need to do um, in response to that. There are very different ways we could approach it. We could have much more engineered and intensive agriculture, the kind of take the nature out of agriculture production, that's much more efficient but brings its own environmental problems. We could have uh, much more kind of local production, people farming in cities, and there's a lot of people recommending we should be using our balconies and terraces and back gardens to grow our own food. Is that practical? Well. It, it's, it's increasingly happening in a number of major cities, um, but you know you, you also need to ask the question, you know, there's these things at the edge of the cities called fields um, that are actually quite good for, for, for growing and for efficiency. So my, my sense is that we're going to need a mix of these different approaches. We are going to have to think more about food resilience in cities. I think it's an issue that's been ignored, and cities are vulnerable to very long global supply chains. So we're going to have to think about how we improve the resilience, but I think part of that improved resilience will also include intensification and, and using new technologies. Governments are going to have to listen and to react. Are they going to do that? It's going to cost. Well. I don't know how much it's going to cost. I think that, that at the moment it's not really an issue that's on the agenda. You know, I, I, we don't really kind of hear it discussed and there's very few cities thinking about food policy for themselves and as cities. So I was kind of slightly worry that we're sleepwalking into kind of future problems and there's that famous MI5 saying that, that we're four meals from anarchy. And you know, if people do get worried about food security and, and, and it becomes short, then things can, can, can get unpleasant very, very quickly. So I think it's the duty of our policymakers to think about how do we get secure, efficient and sustainable sources of food for our citizens that live in cities. Take a look into the crystal ball and, and try and tell me what a, a sustainable urban food system will actually look like. Well, I don't think there'll be a one-size-fits-all, and I think it will be a mix of different approaches, kind of layered approaches. So I think there will be more food grown locally, and I think people in the cities will have more connection with their food and more control um, over their food. So some of it will be grown in the city, some of it will be grown in locality, some of it will be sourced from, from global markets. And I think the thing about food security, it's not being isolated from international markets, it's about being intelligently um, linked in, into them. So there'll be different layers of where people get their food from, and there'll be different techniques. Because because you can grow food, I think, increasingly quite intensively using hydroponics and aeroponics on your balcony and get quite a good crop. And that's not a natural approach, but it's a local approach. So I think we'll see a mixture of people using more natural and more extensive stuff, um, people using uh, you know, more, more engineered approaches to, to food. That's the local approach, as you say. Nationally and internationally, it's going to need the global, it's going to need the corporate approach. I mean, are the corporates going to react in, in the way that you would want them to, do you think? Well, I think corporates are already thinking much, much more seriously about their supply chains. And they've seen some of the vulnerability in long, in long supply chains and what that can do to some of their core products and core markets. So they're thinking about resilience and, and how they build that in and, and where production is happening. So they're, they're responding in that way. They're obviously under increasing pressure to think about healthy food and sustainable food. Um, you know, the, the foresight figures say that in our country, over half of us will be clinically obese if we go on as we are by mid-century. And you can kind of think of the pressures that's going to put on the health system and, and, and on society. So I think business will um, have to respond. And many businesses, the likes of Unilever and PepsiCo, we're seeing them starting to, to respond to really get much more efficient in the agricultural supply chains and to change the kind of products that they're offering consumers. Peter Madden, thank you very much.